Okay, so here's a non-scripted walkthrough and a full cycle demo of Filmstro Pro. We're going to open the demo track, Siege, and I'll explain everything you need to know in this one then. One thing to note just before we get started is do make sure you're using Google Chrome. That's the browser we've specifically designed and developed Filmstro for in the first instance. And also make sure you don't have, you know, dozens of tabs open, particularly not tabs which are running other actual browser-based apps such as, you know, Google Sheets or Figma or things like that. Okay, so when you first open Filmstro, if you've never opened it before, then uh, it'll prompt you for this full guide or quick start. I'm going to skip it for now because I'm going to go through this anyway. Um, but what I will say is that you can access a short video uh, anytime if you come up here and then view tutorial there. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that the video area has got this rather <laughs> ugly um, placeholder. So step one for me certainly in this demo is I'm going to load a video. This little trailer, about a minute and a half long. And the video offset is all about changing where the music starts versus where the uh, video starts. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to right click on the video to show all the controls, which means I can actually access things like, you know, full screen or unmuting and things and even changing the level of the video audio separately, which currently is the only way to give you control over the music versus uh, the video audio. We're obviously going to be bringing other tooling into this to be able to turn down the music independently and things like that. So if I now press play, what the audio engine actually does, that's the other thing to point out, I'll put the metronome on just so you're aware of this. It's a piece in 4-4, four, four, so you're going to hear four clicks before the piece kicks off. Sometimes the piece starts just ahead of um, bar one and beat one in a kind of upbeat or some sort of pre-roll information. But regardless, the audio engine will play an, uh, uh, four beats in. This won't be rendered, by the way. This is just happens in the playback. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do that. And you'll see where the video starts as well. Okay. So if I press stop and play again, then it'll go from the absolute beginning again. And you can see the video starts instantaneously when the playhead starts. So if you wanted to make the video start a little later, say, have the music come in like a kind of, you know, J cut, um, then you can offset it here. Let's make it a little less extreme, actually. Let's do minus three and see what happens. And I hit return, by the way. That should now have locked that in. And let's play again. So putting a minus number in basically means your footage starts later by that many seconds. And then putting a positive number in, let's put plus three, just added it in, hit return. And that means the video will start immediately and then the uh, music playback will come in. So let's go from the very beginning. So you can actually see the video is actually already started by the time our, our audio engine starts. I'm going to mute that video again now, switch the metronome off. And I guess what I would now do is make some changes if I'm not happy with this particular template. So the quickest way you can make a change is to simply load a different template. So by default, the hero template has been loaded through. And by hero, we tend to just mean it's the kind of vanilla version. It's the, the version of the track that you've also heard on the website when you played Siege on the music page. That's, this is what that sounded like. And of course, here you can now see what the music's actually doing under the hood. So the momentum is changing up and then dropping down and building back up. The power is again ramping up gradually and so on. Now, you can load a different um, template, but you can also actually load a different template and save it in a separate snapshot. So you don't have to lose what you might already be quite liking. Perhaps this works for you. This is a, a good rendition of the track and you may not want to make many more changes and you're interested to know what something else sounds like. So instead of having to save as or create a duplicate session, we can actually save this within the same session. So the first thing we do have to do is save. So there's a saving prompt down the bottom here, which I'm going to hit. And I'll just call this demo. And now I've saved it, I'm able to go ahead and access these other versions. Now, when I initially load version one or version two, you'll notice it's actually identical. And 
it's only now if I make a change by say loading the action template you can see it's very different uh, the powers up immediately and has a little drop and the momentum's up all the way through etc if I save that as well if I now go back to main you can see this is the, the one we had before and version 1 has now got a different selection and of course we can do the same with version 2 as well so that's one way of working and creating some difference in the music. The other way of working is, of course, one of the fundamental things is you're going to probably want to make sure the music is roughly the, the right length um, according to the edit you're working with. Now, this edit is actually very short. So in this case, I would actually want to make the music uh, less long. So for that, I would click a musical section. And that means if you click where these numbers are, that basically allows you then to use these two uh, items here which are removing a selected section or basically duplicating a selected section so in this instance I'm actually going to go ahead and take this one here and remove that and now we're down to a piece of music with just three sections and the length of this track um, I believe I'm about to go here to find out is about 1 minute 44 so that's much closer to the edit I've got incidentally the minimum length for a film store track currently is three sections so this is all section one um, you can see by the, the first number this is section two and this is section three anything shorter isn't currently available um, but we are working on making shorter tracks available in particular some popular edit lengths such as 30 and 60 seconds anyway making it longer you can go pretty much unrestricted in theory um, of course there's going to be a sensible limit at some point but you can now duplicate this numerous times as well so once you've done that the next thing you might want to do is just refine some of these momentum depth and power changes so let's say for example that after the section two I want to bring the momentum down there's a couple of ways I can do that so if for example I'm going to just have a very quick listen to how this sounds anyway at this point Great, I'll just hit the space bar there to just um, stop and play. If I do that again, it just pauses exactly where the playhead is and carries on where the playhead is. If I hit stop and play, it goes from the very beginning. And if I select a section by clicking a block and then hitting the space bar, it plays exactly from the beginning of that section, which is quite, quite nice. So going back to this one, then I'm gonna unselect that so I can just place my playhead in. Cool, so what would this sound like if this was slow? So the quickest way of doing that, I'm gonna click this block, because that's the block I wanna work on. I'm gonna make sure I've got momentum selected, not power or depth, so there it is. And now, I'm gonna select snap on, actually, because that just makes my edits a bit cleaner. So for example, if I was to go here, you can see it's snapped perfectly, even though I click just to the right of it, um, it snapped perfectly to the middle position. I'm going to put it all the way down so we hear a really, really big change and you guys can see what, what we've achieved here. Then. So I'm going to hit, um, go up here again with the playhead. Great. So the power's chain this has stayed the same, the depth has remained the same, but the momentum clearly went from really complex and fast down to really, really kind of empty and sparse. And it happened instantly and it actually sounded all right. But let's say we wanted to now refine that um, change. Then what we can do is, let me zoom in a little bit here, what we can do is we can do it in two ways. We can either refine the drop-off um, or we can refine... Um, after the drop-off. So what I mean by that is we've got two ways of tackling the same thing basically. If I select this block here then what you'll see is the momentum is all the way to the top and that's just showing you what that current selection is. If I click on this one you can see the momentum is all the way at the bottom. So that's effectively what we're, we're looking at. That's our starting point. So let's start with this one. So I'm going to click on this block, momentum's at the top, and now I'm going to go over here to this transitions icon which opens our transitions area. Now we have two transitions which are the out shape, which is on the right hand side of a selected block, and we have the in shape, which is on the left hand side of a selected block. So clearly, the in shape is completely irrelevant right now because there is no change. It's going from high momentum to high momentum. But the out shape is very much what we're dealing with here, and it's on the right hand side. And it goes currently from high momentum all the way down to low momentum. So if we want to change this, then what we first need to do is to change it away from the default snap. Now the snap is currently on, which shows you literally goes from high to low in one immediate, essentially, drop-off. Now if we change it from snap, we're going to open up the other 
um, shapes basically. So the first one to select, if I click it once, is linear. And it's also put a, in a default size in from nothing to something. So we've got S, which stands for small. And you can see it's put a very small linear transition in there. Just so you guys can see a bit better what I'm doing, I'm going to actually click this one more time and change it to medium. So you can now see there's a medium linear transition, which is, the, which is applied to the out shape, which means the right-hand side of the selected block is now changing. And we can now, keeping it at medium, if I wanted to, I could also change this, the shape again maybe changing it to like an ease out, or maybe more like a fade out, or if I click it one more time, we're now back to snap, which has basically switched everything back off again. So that's how that works. Let's just audition one of these. So let's say it's a linear medium, and we're gonna play this back. This time I'm just gonna um, hit the space bar whilst I've got this selected, and it'll just play from the beginning, and you'll see the, the music change and come down more gradually this time. Nice. So I have no particular preference musically, but that's something you guys have got to decide. And it's all about how you think the music sounds best in terms of transitions. That's why we've created these templates in the first place, because they tend to work, although we haven't actually auditioned them against every piece. And over time, we're going to be adding more templates and custom templates for every track. So that's how you change one of these things. If you want to get it back to how it was, you've got a couple of ways of doing that. Either, as I've already said, you can click until you get to the snap and that will get rid of it. Or you could use this tool here which is the reset now the reset doesn't it's not like an undo which will also take you back the reset actually smashes the whole thing down and gives you the lowest value and um, that might be useful if you just have want a clean slate and you want to kind of really think about well what do i actually want to happen in this block so that's the reset which of course we can also undo the other way of working is actually directly in the block itself so instead of doing the movement with the slider so here, for example, we went down, didn't we, all the way. If I bring that back up, and instead of using the slider up here to go down, I'm actually going to now Alt-click. I'm on a Mac, so I'm Alt-clicking, and you can see that's just put it there smartly again with Snap on in the middle or smartly at the bottom. If we unsnap, then we can do basically the same again, but this time it's more bespoke. It'll go wherever we want it to. Similarly, if I use the slider, you can see I can leave it in a more bespoke position. So that's how that works. The other thing you might want to do to speed up your workflow is, of course, you may not want to just change one thing. You might be looking at this track and thinking, well, that's all nice to come down in momentum here. And let's say we want to put it all the way down. But what if I wanted the rest of the track to also stay down in terms of momentum? Well, that's fine. All you have to do is you have to select all the areas you want to work on by doing shift select. So I've clicked on one block. Now I shift select the last block. And now we just change it again. Now, because this first one's already down, I'm already down because that's how, that was the first one I selected. So this is a bit of a weird thing where I just have to go up once and then down. So the other way of, of doing that would, of course, have been if we just undo a couple of steps here. Um, if we'd, we'd gone from this point, say, and selected all of these, at this point, the slider is actually still there. So, of course, now just hitting low takes them all down. And then the other thing we can do is if you think that these micro transitions where you're applying a shape um, to just one block is a bit limiting and it's too small, there are ways of working across multiple blocks. So if you multi-select a number of regions, making sure that there is one region which is different in value to the other regions, then what's going to happen when you hit ramp, it's going to interpolate between this high value and these low values. So you'll see that happen here. So that's basically created this nice fall off across a number of different uh, sections here or blocks. The other thing I haven't talked about yet is auditioning. This is arguably something you may want to do earlier on in the workflow. So if I audition, what that basically means is it sort of switches off the timeline. It means that when I hit play, it's going to play back exactly what these sliders are saying. And then I can actually control these sliders in real time as well to change the music in real time to really get an idea of what the different moods are and the kind of emotional changes I can make in this music. So I'll just give you a quick overview of that. But when we switch the audition off again, you can see immediately, um, if I click into any of these blocks, you can see it's, it's reading what, what's in the timeline again. And 
yeah, that's how that works. Basically, when you switch Audition on, it will automatically um, switch the snap off, by the way, because, of course, then you can move the sliders properly. So when you un-audition, you might just want to switch your snap back on. And that's just personal preference for you guys. Let's do a render now in real time. Because I'm screen recording, this may take a little longer than expected. Uh, usually it's between about 20 and 30 seconds for a render of an average track length of, say, two and a half, three minutes of music. Um, this one could take a bit longer. So, yeah, see you on the other side. Okay, and there's the rendered file. The download does automatically prompt a modal, um, for me at least, so that's something to be aware of, but you can cancel that and then obviously just download manually from here if you wish. You can also preview the file here. So by basically pressing play here, we can then hear the, the soundtrack we've created, the custom soundtrack. I believe we've covered all of the fundamentals. I hope this has been useful. And for any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch, um, support at filmstore.com. And we look forward to answering your questions and yeah, happy editing.